but the men in the story are almost all uh, rotters. You, you, uh, uh, this is not a, it's not a men-friendly book. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I'll tell you something funny though. Uh, a, a lot of people ask me if I ever felt threatened, you know, during the writing of this book. And one of the things I say that it's a great compliment, not to me, but to Bombay. So that, that city, for all its faults, allowed a woman to go out and write this book at night and research this book at night. You could only do it at night because obviously these people work at night. And, you know, you can't call them up and suggest a breakfast meeting because at breakfast they are fast asleep. Um, but the men I met just went out of their way to be gentlemen, you know, pulling chairs and offering me mupani and talking about Purushottam Shetty who's having this, you know, extremely passionate affair with Leela and sleeping with half a dozen other girls in his dance bar, uh, goes out of his way to tell me about his wife and his kids and to describe himself as a family man. Um, but the men always let them down. Um, yes. I, I think the men... I, I think the men are uniformly weak. Um, I know. I, I just, I'm not going to say anything except to you know, shake my head in a sort of maybe, maybe not sort of way. <laughs> the other intriguing thing is the self harm, which seems to be, again, it's in, in Sukhati's book, mm -hmm. it seems to be a, a constant. No self esteem, what's going on there? Um, you know, I, one of the things that struck me, and this is true of uh, the question as to why these, uh, Leela and Priya wanted to get married. Why if they enter the profession of bar dancing to be independent of men and to make their own money, why do they keep seeking dependence in the form of relationships and marriage? Um, and this was just something that, I, I, in my understanding, uh, the uh, response to this is that they wanted they wanted to be part of mainstream, they wanted to be part of larger society and uh, wanted to follow convention because they thought that if one followed these conventional mores then people would accept them and the cutting sort of grew from that because they couldn't get what they wanted, they couldn't break free of the life they had, they couldn't cross over to this larger world that they wanted entry to and it was a lot of pent up frustration and cutting was one of the outlets for that. What was your methodology in this book? Was your in very tricky situation? I mean, the situation where it's easy to take notes and um, sitting in a sitting in a bar with, with these kind of people is not necessarily the ideal place to whip out a notepad and, and start jotting everything down. How did you? I mean, the thing that strikes one very strongly in this book is the strength of the dialogue mm -hmm. and and the uh, the truth of the dialogue. How did you capture that? Was this with, with tape recorders or, or, or notes or novelistic flair? Or? <laughs> it was with hidden cameras. <laughs> no, I, I think, you know, I just, uh, I did it for such a long period of time that uh, it became, after a while I was thinking like that. You know, one of the things that really made my eyes Were pop. Were you taking notes? Did you have notes? Y yes, I did. I had notebooks and sometimes I would record, but obviously, now there's a, uh, you know, I, I meet a couple of dalals in the book. I, you're, you're talking to somebody who takes girls uh, and sends them to Hyderabad where you know they perform sex work and it's all obviously very dark and, and completely illegal. Now they are not going to appreciate being recorded. So it really depended um, on the situation. But um, I, I, I think it was just being around for very long that allowed me to start thinking like that and made, I became comfortable with the language. I, it, it became, you know, in a way part of my vocabulary. Some of the words I still mutter to myself in my head. <laughs>